Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to my video tutorial. My name is Shana Svarman. In this video, we will look at the fundamental concept of clustering in machine learning. In the clustering topic, there are the contents in this lecture. First of all, is what is clustering? Why clustering in machine learning? Types of clustering algorithms in machine learning and applications of clustering. I will discuss the details of clustering in the next slides. What is clustering? So before starting the clustering, I would recommend it to check the types of machine learning algorithms. Take a look at the image. It's a collection of fruits of different shapes, colors, and size. Take a moment to categorize them by similarity into a number of groups. So let me just show you an example of how clustering works. Suppose we have some fruits on the table and we make an algorithm works so we are just checking for the color, size and shape and all of that. Some of the most popular clustering algorithms can be used to group these fruits. <clears throat> we come to a conclusion that there are three categories of fruits over here. We have apples, we have guavas, and we have strawberries. This is called as clustering mechanism of unsupervised learning. So what is unsupervised learning? Unsupervised learning is a machine learning technique in which the users do not need to supervise the model. Instead, it allows the model to work on its own to discover patterns and information that was previously undetected. It mainly deals with the unleveled data. Clustering is the most popular technique in unsupervised learning. It mainly deals with finding a structure or pattern in a collection of uncategorized data. Clustering algorithms will process your data and find natural clusters if they exist in the data. It is the implementation of human cognitive ability to discern objects based on their nature. For example, when you go out for a grocery shopping, you will easily distinguish between apples and oranges in a given set of containing both of them. You distinguish these two objects based on their color, texture, and other sensory information that is processed by your brain. Clustering is an evolution of this process so that machines are able to distinguish between different objects. Why clustering in machine learning? Clustering is an important technique as it performs the determinations of the intrinsic grouping among the unleveled data set. In clustering, there are no standard criteria. All of it depends on the users and suitable criteria that satisfy their needs and requirements. For example, to find the homogeneous groups, one can find the representatives through data reductions and describes their suitable properties. Types of clustering algorithm. The clustering methods are broadly divided into hard clustering and soft clustering. We will learn about hard clustering and soft clustering in the next slide, but there are also other various approaches of clustering exist. Below are the some main clustering methods used in machine learning. These are hierarchical clustering, k-means clustering, density-based clustering, distributions model-based clustering, and fuzzy clustering. Okay, if we talk in the context of broad spectrum, there are two types of clusters. One is the hard cluster and another is the soft cluster. In hard clustering, each data point either belongs to a cluster completely or not. This means that items can only in group no matter in what. In, so in soft clustering, data points can belong to more than one cluster to a certain degree. We can see from the soft clustering figure, the light colors items are existing more than one cluster. There are no specific boundary exists in the cluster. So there are some data points where some properties exist in one group 
and some properties exist in another group. But in hard clustering, there is no specific boundary exists in the cluster. Hierarchical clustering. Hierarchical clustering is an algorithm which builds a hierarchy of cluster. It begins with all the data which is assigned to a cluster of their own. Two closed clusters are going to be in the same cluster. This means that if the distance of the two clusters are very close, they will belong to the same cluster. This algorithm ends when there is only one cluster left. In this technique, the data set is divided into clusters to create a tree-like structure, which is called a dendrogram. <clears throat> this is the dendrogram. In the dendrogram clustering method, each level represents a possible clusters the height of the the height of the <coughs> dendrogram shows the level of the similarity between two clusters the most common examples of hierarchical clustering is agglomerative hierarchical algorithm single linkage algorithm is the most common algorithm in hierarchical clustering I will discuss the detail of single linkage algorithm. The single linkage is also known as the minimum method and the nearest neighbor method. It is obtained by defining the distance between two clusters to be the smallest distance between two points such that one point is in each cluster. If CI and CJ are two clusters, the distance between them is defined by this equation where C, I, and C, J are two clusters and D, A, comma, B denotes the distance between the samples A and B. Performing hierarchical clustering of these samples using the single linkage algorithm, table one shows the five samples and table two shows the feature values of each samples and the distance between each pair of the samples. Using Euclidean distance method, we compute the distance. For, for case of sample one and two, we compute distance uh, four, which is the distance between one and two. And we compute distance 11.7, which is the distance between one and three distance 20.0 which is the distance between one and four distances has been found in the same process for other samples in this table the smallest number is Four, which is the distance between sample one and sample two. So cluster one and two are merged. At that point, there are four cluster. One and two is another cluster. Three is another cluster. Four is another cluster and five is another cluster. We get distance 8.1 from table two, from table two, which is the distance between one three and two three. In these two distances, 8.1 is minimum. So we get this value in three. 16.0 is the minimum distance uh, with, uh, between one four and two four. 17.9 is minimum distance between the samples 1.5 and 2.5. In this table, 8 is the minimum value. So sample 4 and 5 are merged. At that point, there are three cluster. 1 and 2 is one cluster, 
3 is another cluster and 4 and 5 is another cluster. In table 4, the smallest value is 8.1, which is the distance between 1, 3 and 2, 3. So cluster 1, 2 and 3 are merged. At that point, there are two clusters, 1, 2, 3 and 4, 5. In table 5, we can see that only two clusters are here. In this step, two remaining clusters are masked at a distance of 9.8. The hierarchical clustering is completed in this step. This is the dendrogram. The height of the dendrogram shows the level of similarity between two joint clusters. Cluster 1 and 2 are joined at distance 4.0. 4 and 5 are joined at distance 8.0. 1, 2, 3 are joined at distance 8.1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are joined at distance 9.8. Partitioning clustering. It is a type of clustering that divides the data into non-hierarchical groups. This means that if a partitional algorithm is used to divide the data sets into two groups, and then each of these is divided into two parts, and so on. It is also known as the centroid-based method. The cluster center is created. The cluster center is created in such a way that the distance between the data points of one cluster is minimum as compared to another cluster centroid. Now let's talk. Now let's talk about the k-means clustering algorithm. K-means clustering algorithm is an iterative algorithm that tries to partition the data set into k predefined distinct non-overlapping subgroups, where each data point belongs to only one group. It assigns data points to a cluster such that the sum of the square distance between the data points and the clusters is centroid is at the minimum. The way K-means clustering algorithms works is as follows. At first, specify number of clusters K. Initialize centroid by first shuffling the data set and then randomly selecting K data points for the centroids without replacement. Keep iterating until there is no change to the centroids. That is, assignment of the data points to a cluster isn't changing. Compute the sum of the square distance between the data points and all centroids. Assign each data point to the closest clusters. Performing partitional clustering using K-means clustering algorithm. Table one shows the sample data table of five samples. Initially set K equals to two k1 and k2. So begin with two clusters, k1 equals to 1 and k2 equals to 2. Which of the centroid? 84 is for k1 and 244 is k2. For each of the remaining samples, find the nearest centroid, put the samples in the clusters and recompute the centroid of this cluster. We calculate the distance between centroids using Euclidean distance method. In this equation, zero denotes the observed value and C denotes the centroid value. So here is the initial centroids of cluster one and two. In the case of third sample, which is 15, eight, for sample three, we perform the Euclidean distance method to find the distance. We get two distances, 8.06 and 9.84. 8.06 is small. Then K2, so sample three, are joined with cluster one. Since the sample three is clustered with one, only the centers of K1 will be updated. So here is the new centroid value of K1 and uh, the centroid of K2 remain unchanged. K2 is remain unchanged. <coughs> so here is the new centroid value of K1 and K2. For sample four, 
we get two distances 7.76 and 20. 7.76 is the minimum. So sample four are joined with cluster one three. Since the sample four is clustered with one three, only the centroid of K1 will be updated. So here is the new centroid value of K1. The centroid of K2 remain unchanged. The fifth sample is 24, 12. For sample five, we perform the Euclidean distance method to find the distances. So sample, in this case, we see that 17.69 uh, is the distance of K1 and 8 is the distance of K2. So 8 is the minimum. So uh, sample 5 is clustered with sample 2. We examine the samples one by one uh, and put each one is the clusters identified with the nearest centroid. So the resulting clusters are K1 equals to 1, 3, 4 and K2 equals to 2, 5. Density-based clustering. The density-based clustering method connects yeah, the yeah. highly dense areas into clusters and the arbitrary shape distributions are formed as long as the dense regions can be connected. These algorithms can face difficulty in clustering the data points if the data set has varying densities and high dimensions. The most common examples of density-based clustering is DVSCAN, density-based spatial clustering of applications with noise. The DV scan, this algorithm identifies different clusters in the data set and connects the areas of high densities into clusters points. There are two input parameters, epsilon and minimum number of points. It starts with a random unvisited starting data point. All points within a distance epsilon classify as neighborhood points. And you need a minimum number of points within the neighborhood to start the clustering process under such circumstances, the current data points becomes the first point in the clusters. Otherwise, the point gets leveled as noise. In either case, the current point becomes a visited point. All points within the distance epsilon become part of the same cluster. Repeat the procedure for all the new points added to the cluster group. Continue with the process until you visit and level each point within the epsilon neighborhood of the cluster. Distributions model based clustering. The data is divided based on the probability of how a data set belongs to a particular distribution. The grouping is done by assuming some distributions, commonly Gaussian distributions. The most common examples of the distributions model based clustering is expectations maximization clustering algorithm that uses Gaussian mixture models. Fuzzy clustering. Fuzzy clustering is a type of soft method in which a data object may belong to more than one group or cluster. Each data set has a set of membership coefficients which depends on the degree of memberships to be in a cluster. The most common examples of fuzzy clustering is the fuzzy Siemens clustering. It is sometimes also known as the fuzzy Kenning's algorithm. Applications of clustering. Clustering algorithms for identifications of cancer cells. In a mix of data consisting of both cancerous and non-cancerous data, the clustering algorithms are able to learn the various features present in the data upon which they produce the resulting clusters. Clustering algorithm in search engines. While searching for sometimes particular on Google, you receive a mix of similar results that match to your original query. This is a result of clustering that groups similar objects in a single clusters and provides that to you. Clustering algorithm in wireless network using the clustering algorithm on the wireless nodes, we are able to save energy utilized by the wireless sensors. There are various clustering based algorithms in wireless networks to improve their energy, consumptions, and optimize data transmission. Clustering for customer segmentations. One of the most popular applications of the clustering is in the field of customer segmentation. Based on the analysis of user base, companies are able to identify customers 
who would prove to be potential users for their product or services. 